Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to explore the other part of the new hierarchical regression functionality. In the previous video that I did on the channel we looked at extensively what you would do if you were doing a linear regression with a dependent variable, a y variable that is continuous. In this video we are going to do a hierarchical logistical regression. So the new hierarchical functionality came with JASP version 0 0.19 and the 0 0.1 here that you see is a, hot, a set of hot fixes that they had to do uh, back in September. Uh, so at the time of this video, there is a new version coming soon, but for now, this is what we have. So let's go ahead and open up a data file and take JASP for a spin as they suggest. And I've got a, uh, whoop, whoop. <laughs> forgot when you click on this, um, opens it up. In any case, I have it, it opens up the open button. In any case, I have the uh, data file that I want to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold option down so I can maximize this. It does bring up the keyboard functionality uh, for navigation. I'm just gonna hit option again to take that away. If you're on Windows, that is the alt button. Um, but of course there's a maximize button for Windows, 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 anyways. So I don't want to make it full screen because, you know, I love that you guys can see all of the stuff that's happening right here. Look, it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit in 86% humidity right now. And it is 936 in the morning on Monday, November 25th. Look at amazing. You know exactly when I'm recording. Why? Why not? Anyways, let's go ahead and um, talk about this logistic regression data file. So this is one that comes with JASP. Let me just show you where I found it. You go up to the hamburger menu, which is, you know, a good old database. Uh, people call it hamburger menus now, but it's a database. Um, we go to open data library, uh, number four, regression, and the two logistic regression data files are all the way down here. So we are using the Titanic file, um, but you can also do this with turbines, although this is a binomial logistic regression as opposed to a standard logistic regression. So we've got the Titanic. This is uh, just to go over what we've got here, we've got the name of the passenger. Interestingly, here they all are, 1,300 passengers. Ooh, let's find, see if we can find Rose and uh, Jack. Yeah, yeah, we should totally do that. Oh, a lot of people don't have ages. That's not great. Um, but then we've got sex and we've got our DV of survived, zero or one. Uh, so we've got 1,300 passengers, a little bit more than that, of course. Uh, many of them did not survive. There's a lot of zeros on there, of course, if you know your history. A lot of people did survive, though, and so we're going to find out whether uh, the sex of the passenger and their age, as well as their cabin class, plays a role. Now, as you can see, this particular JASP wrap wrapper and this data set already has a logistic regression in here, but I want to play with the hierarchical functionality, and so we are going to not look through this, although you can see a lot of um, things already changing here. So good to know we've got we already have M0 and M1 and um, in M0, as you can see that there is um, essentially nothing there, but we're going to we're going to play with that full stop. So anyway, so the important reference that I want to uh, show here uh, is if you uh, see this is from the British Board of Trade 1990 report on the loss of the SS Titanic British Board of Trade inquiry from Gloucester, UK, and the data set can be found in R as well. Titanic.html. Perfect. OK, so. Of course, as you can see down here, this is what we are going to um, mess around with. Survive be, uh, is regressed on age and um, class, right? Cabin class, first, second, or third. Oh boy, first class, second class, or third class. And we are going to then add sex in another hierarchy and, uh, hierarchy and see if that changes. So we are going to do this model first, and then we are going to add sex as another variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go up to regression, okay? And here we have logistic regression. We're going to click on that. OK, waiting for initialization of the engine. There we go. And um, as I said in my previous version, I have my options set to show the JASP R output here. So I could copy and paste this into my R, uh, you know, my R console or my R studio if I wanted to. I can also mess around with the R code here instead of using the point and click. But of course, this is how I was raised. So we're going to use the point and click menus as well. And um, again, to use this type of functionality, you do need the JASP. Uh, package in your R console or R studio installed. But again, it uses um, the same sorts of functions that uh, our logistic regression or other logistic regression packages use. So it's quite uh, flexible. OK, so I just leave those two there. Uh, and then I have this checkbox show all options, because if I were to scroll down, you can see a lot of things are marked false. So that's why they're not showing up over here, because when they are false, they do not show up in the code, because this code is showing you what's happening on the results output. OK. Um, and then if you make changes to this, you can hit command enter on max or control enter on max to apply those changes over to the results output. Okay, so let's go ahead and put survived in our dependent variable. And you can see here that model zero already um, and model one already go. And uh, I can show you down here. This is where you operate the hierarchical piece 
of the regression, of the logistical regression. That's where you do it, right? So model zero could just be the intercept as we have here, right? Of course, model one is also the intercept. You have to have a model zero or model not and a model one. And if you want to, you can just leave the model not or model zero as just the intercept to see the change in, um, believe that's chi squared. No, I think that's just x squared. That's what is um, changing. That is the thing that's changing. It's not the same as r squared, although you can have those here. But let's go ahead and add in the statistics so we can um, see uh, what is changing. So let's go ahead and get our factor descriptives, of course. Let's add that. I mean, we don't have any factors yet. So let's do that. OK, I think we're going to be fine with maximum likelihood estimates. I don't really want to play with any of these. I don't really want to play with uh, the residuals here uh, or append the residuals to my data file. Performance diagnosis, confusion matrix, accuracy, AUC. I don't really think we need all of this stuff just to show you how the hierarchical works. You can definitely play with all of this. I am not a logistic regression heavy uh, statistician. I don't use it very frequently. I don't usually have a yes or no dichotomous variable in my in my teaching or in my, I, I definitely don't have time to teach logistic regression, uh, but, uh, or my uh, own research these days. So I don't really play with any of this stuff. So we're just going to leave everything basic. Um, now this again is where you do the hierarchical right in the model submenu, because right here where you might find it in, I don't know, Jamovi or SPSS in the method, we still only have enter backward, forward and stepwise and stepwise is not the same thing as a hierarchical regression. Okay. Um, and again, this is also not hierarchical linear modeling because these are not within uh, subject uh, factors or covariates. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in age for covariates because that's what it is and P class as a factor. And we're going to go ahead and add um, just like they did with uh, model one as age and P class. And we're going to go ahead and see that my delta X squared is 115.65. It's one thing to note here. Deviance goes down. Good. And um, this delta X squared has a P value of less than 0 0.001. Great. And then we get some, uh, there are four R squares that you can get for logistic regressions. McFadden, Nagakirkel, uh, Kirka, excuse me, Jour, Tjur, sorry if I mispronounced that. And then Cox and Snell. Okay. And they're all relatively close, although uh, Tjur and Cox and Snell are much higher. Oh, wait, sorry, misread that. Um, Nagel Kirka is uh, the highest of the bunch. Okay. So, but all relatively within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 range. That's, that's good. So, here we have a breakdown, right? Because what we get with P class is a categorical variable that needs to be broken out. So this is age and then a um, estimate for second compared to uh, first and second com or third, excuse me, compared to first, right? So uh, survive level one coded as class one. Okay. So here we see our, and we want to go ahead and look at um, estimate and our Z statistic. So it looks like third class, a lot of people don't tend to die. <laughs> um, the uh, older somebody got, the more that they died. And we are going to see with model two whether or not sex had any role to play here, right? Men versus women, typically. And we're going to throw that in. And it's comparing males, okay, versus females. And you can see that if the sex were males. Oh, boy. Oh, I don't want you here. Um, no, I want you in model two. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at our changes. So from model not with just the intercept. Right, no predictor variables. Um, it's safe to say that the intercept is like, you know, people died. People tended to die. That's what the Z statistic here is showing you. Uh, it's negative. So people tended to die. So th out of 1300 people, you're more likely to have died than not died. That's the intercept. Is <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> um, and that is statistic through a walled test. Right. <laughs> Add in age and um, cabin class, and we can see that age and cabin class is statistic. Oh, statistic. Statistically significant. That's what I meant to say. And our um, delta x squared from intercept to those predictors, also significant. Okay. And then if we add in sex for model two, we can see that, yes, it is still statistically significant. Although the intercept now is, po oh, I guess it was positive in model one is positive in model two. So less likely, so more likely to live when we factor in all of these other things. So age, older you are, the more likely you are to die. And that's about the same. It, it goes down a little bit, goes down a little bit from model one to model two. Um, second class, uh, more likely to die than first class. And that went down a little bit as well. Um, third class, more likely to die than second and third. And that one goes down just a smidge, like it's 0.6. And then um, now we're adding sex in there, male more likely to die um, than, uh, than female. And that is the... Uh, Z change. And in all cases, each of these are significant. Um, and we can go back up here to delta X squared and we get a almost 100 point additional swing here. And that change in and of itself is significant. I mean, here's the thing. If 115, 0 to 115 is significant, then 100 point swing, 99, uh, is that's also going to be significant. I mean, these, these P's are probably teeny tiny. And you can see that we are from with our McFadden and uh, Nagelkirche, uh, Tajur and um, Cox and Snell, we get a point 
oh wow, we get a we get a massive swing here. We get like a 0.32 to 0.48. Yeah, those are our big ones. So I mean, you know, report all of them or report the one that you like the best. Report the one that makes the most sense. Our deviance has gone down with more predictors, and our AIC and BIC have also gone down. Okay. Um, here's the thing with factor descriptives. I like it how it broke out the first and how many were um, male and uh, female in first, second, and third. And you can see that there were quite a few. Yeah, that, well, there are more of each of them. I wish we had a breakdown for descriptives. Um, I guess we don't. We can get plots as well. Yeah, buddy. All right. Parts. I, I'm not going to put plots on because you can see plots up here. Um, age. Yep. Uh, more likely to survive when they were young, less likely when they were old. Same thing with class, more likely to survive. Um, and then the one thing that they didn't do in this one is look at sex, but I think eh, perfectly valid um, to put in sex here uh, to show us what happens with sex uh, in Model 2. So love it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Anyways, the power of hierarchical regression allows us to look at the change. I wish there was another variable that we could use in this particular, but we only have name. Um, to see if there was one that was not a predictor. Uh, let's see. I mean, like it, if it listed their trade or something like that. You know what? The, what they're bringing to the um, what they're bringing to the U.S. I know some people were just going on vacation, and what a crappy vacation it was, right? So, anyways, that is how you do hierarchical logistic regression in JASP 0.19. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or other feedback, please leave that in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you all next time. Bye.